Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. Um, today is shocking. The weather is absolutely hideous. Um, we've been forecast rain for about four days on the bounce and they reckon in one of them days we're going to get about a month's rain in one day. So it's going to be raining inside the shed as well as outside. I have a sneaky suspicion because my shed now leaks to a smidge but I need to get it fixed. Anyway, um, what have we got on? So today, um, I had a gentleman ring me, he's a friend of a friend, he rang me out and said, do I repair mowers? I said, well, I'd, I'd try to. Um, and I think he fell into the trap that lots of people fall into and we bought a lawnmower from a lawn, uh, from a, a car boot sale or flea market or second hand sale, that sort of thing. Um, he bought one lawnmower uh, last week and got it home and it, the bloke showed him it running, which he's happy with. But when he got it home, it became very apparent it wasn't running right. It would only run on choke, but um, literally on choke, blowing out black smoke and what have you, as it, as it should do on choke. But when you take it off a choke, it won't run. That was the first one. And then the second one, he went back the next week. The bloke wasn't there, obviously, he'd gone. So another bloke was selling a lawnmower, and um, he paid, I think it was about £35, £40 for each mower. Uh, the second one uh, was running, and since he's got it home, he hit something very, very hard. Um, the engine cut out and he since then can't start it. I've had a quick little look at it when I picked it up for him um, to see if it was the keyway and it's not. Um, so what he said is if I fix the red one he I can fix I can keep the grey one so I said that's no problem um, so there's no money involved literally he give me a mower I repair his mower and I, I get another mower um, for nothing so that's pretty cool. Um, so I look at them two ticks um, but before I do I've um, got a um, a letter come through to mixed mowers. Uh, this is addressed to me, not Riley Boy. So I'll open this one up. And it's come all the way over from, from New York. And it's, it's a sticker exchange, which I contacted the fella. His name is Henry, and he runs the channel um, Mowers and Blowers over in New York. And he does ride on mowers, he does push mowers, he does strimmers and chainsaws. To, very similar to me, um, just different, different, different part of the world. So if you can, go and check out um, Henry over at Mowers and Blowers. Um, the link to his channel will be just above on the right hand side as always now. Go and check him out and tell him that Mick Mowers sent you over to have a look at his channel. So if it's something you want to do, give him a like, give him a tap and ring his bell maybe and that would be super cool. So I'll put it up on the old toolbox. In fact, I'll do it now. Let's whack it up on the old toolbox. I've got mine the engine I'm down by the camera because that's my... Um, my hater engine. At some point in my life, I'll get around to actually fix that. It's coming. I'm just trying to try and get one of these customers' mowers first. Right, just peeling it off the old back of the old sticker, and we're we'll sticking him down here. That's a cool place to have it, just below making tracks. So there you go, Henry. You've made it onto Riley's toolbox, looking cool. And uh, I know that I've sent you one of my stickers over. So uh, that's a stickers trade done. If anyone else has any stickers they'd like to send over, not a problem. I'll give you my email address at the end of this video, and then you can send a sticker to uh, to myself or Riley. If you want someone over to Riley Boy, just make sure you're dressed to Riley's mowers, not mixed mowers, and uh, he'll uh, he better open the letter for you. Okay, cool. So thank you, Henry, over at Mowers and Blowers. Fantastic sticker. I hope you enjoyed our one. So let's get on and do these two other mowers. Um, I'll do the red one first. I think that's just a carburetor clean, and then the grey one will come in a bit later on. The grey one is a lawn flight with an MTD on it, and the mount uh, the red one is a mount field. Can't remember what, which one it is, but we'll have a look in a minute. Um, so without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out these two little cars. I won't be out long because it is lashing down with rain. So the mount field is a SP454, uh, self-propelled, two-year warranty, all that sort of good lovely stuff. And um, it's just running on choke, it won't run off of, um, of normal, normal throttle. So 
that's what the mouthfeel's doing. As soon as you take it off of, off of choke, um, she cuts out. So that's that one. And then we've got this um, MTD long flight jobby. Um, and I've noticed up the top here, the throttle is moving, but it's not moving down here, where it should do. Let's just try and give it a pull. So the throttle's not working on that. I can't see any signs of any damage. There's a little bit of oil down here. I might have to check that out. I say it did hit something quite hard, so it might have blown the bottom of the seal. I'm not quite sure yet, but that one we'll look at at another day. All right, we'll make the start, I suppose. It's absolutely bucketing down out here. Crazy weather. A quick slurp of my old coffee. Thank you, Chris. Right. Let's have a look at the old girl. So it's a 2014 model. The air filter definitely has uh, seen better days to a degree. It's only a sponge one though. Uh, lots of mold in here, so this has been standing a little while. Um, as I say, this is just a, not a service, this is a, a running repair. The bloke, he's an oldest gentleman, doesn't have a lot of money, um, and is in not very good health either. So that's why I decided to do a deal with him and uh, go for an in, uh, a lawnmower swap rather than uh, charge a man any cash. He needs a lawnmower, he's got two that don't work, so let's try and give him one that does work, shall we? That's, uh, that's the easiest thing. Just gonna start by <coughs> taking these 10 mils off on a magnet tray. Dropped a nut already. <coughs> That's probably a bad omen. Let me pick that up. All right, got it. That's that. <coughs> Let's uh, remove the HT lead if I can. These are quite, oh, not too bad. The spark plug looks relatively good. It's got a Briggs in there. It's got a Briggs, is that a Briggs? Yeah, a Briggs spark plug in there. So let's remove this and take the air pipe, air breather pipe off. Ooh, that's that off. Comes with a little tiny metal gasket. So the gasket comes off eventually. And it's got a little tiny hole up the top right hand corner, which goes over that one. <clears throat> Next thing to do is to clamp the fuel off. This has got a, this has got a full tank of juice on here. I'm gonna have my coffee for a burn, but non-spill cup, that's what it's all about. Uh, let's clamp this fuel line off, get my medical forceps in, lock it off just there, pair along those snips. Remove this silly little clip, but don't do a lot. Screwdriver. Just to try and tease that um, fuel line back. Oh, I want to get a uh, pair of long nose snips on it first, because we give it a bit of a rotate first. Try and free it up. That's been on there a while, that has. Probably since day one, I suspect. That's coming. Right, oh, there's a fuel line. So, I want this carburetor to come off now. Will it come off this way altogether? No. So, pull this linkage over and uh, pair along those snips in here and just tweeze it up. There's a little tiny spring that come off as well. That one comes off. That should now swing out to a certain degree without breaking anything. There it goes. Got a gasket behind, trying to keep it in good order. And then tip the carburetor forward and away it goes. Push that arm back in. And that's it, there's our carburetor. Right. There's a carb. Let's try and have a look, see what we've got in here. A bit of fuel coming out. Not a 
bottom of the carpet doesn't look too bad. Bit of fuel in there, bit of corrosion, bit of rust. So that's what I'm suspecting the problem to be. Let's remove that pin. Float comes off, needle comes off. Needle looks good. And it's like there's a bit of gunk inside the needle chamber. And I want to look to see what's going on with this uh, this main jet. <clears throat> Doesn't look shockingly bad, but the carburetor looks very dry inside, very dry. I don't think it's due to it just being uh, evaporated off either. So let me just grab a jet screwdriver. That might be a bit too big. I got it. I think I got it. Oh. There's the main jet. And the tube's got to come out if I can get it out. That is loose. There it goes. Alright, that's blown off and cleaned up. Next, I want to take this jet out here. So it's just like a flow jet. So let's wind it in. Uh, there. One. Two. Three. Three and a half. Three and three quarters. We'll go to four. So when I put that back in, I'm going to wind it all the way in full, full rotations and then um, pull it back out full. I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible. So I just want to move on because my video's coming about an hour long each. It's getting crazy. I'm going to bring it down to about 30 minutes maximum if I can. Lift that up very, very gently. That's that out. There's no dirt in there, but that one compressing through that hole, through that hole, through that hole, and through that hole after I sprayed it with some um, carb cleaner or WD 40. That's what he's doing with that. <clears throat> and then the main jet itself, I can see perfect daylight through there, absolutely perfect. However, the hole is not very, very big. Let me put a light behind it so you can see better. There you go, there's, there's a hole. It's not brilliant. I'll clean that up a touch. Just get a bit more flow. And these want a good clean and rod through as well with my um, cleaning files as well. So that's what I'm going to do off camera. Get all this, these uh, filed up, cleaned up and done. Uh, if you haven't got a pair of these, you can get these on eBay or Amazon for around about 99p. Just a little set of files. And all you do is you grab a, you grab a, your jet and you push these through each one just to clean them all up and back it up with WD-40 carb spray cleaner and an air compressor if you've got one just to clean them all up so I'll do it now and I'll come back okay that's all the jets all now cleaned up <clears throat> just want to give us a bit of a clean in here you've got some residue stuff all here so a bit of a WD-40 spray put your finger over the bottom wire brush Good general clean. All nooks and crannies. Back it up again. Tip it backwards. And all that metal filing stuff is coming out. Getting a bit low on WD-40. Clean rag. Bit of a clean. You won't get it all, but it's getting most of it out. With that let's bring the float in just check the float for any cracks looks really good the needle looks really good there's no dirt or grime on the needle so that's okay right we can now reassemble this carburetor put the tube in first 
followed by the jet. Now the jet I have filed out ever so slightly. I haven't taken a lot of material off, but just literally, I'm trying to get a better, better look through if I can. There you go. So now you can see there's a much better light through there, much bigger than what it was. <coughs> And it's just a question of just cleaning that out. That was that was quite small compared to what it was now. So that goes in. Do that up. And just do it up tight enough so it's well seated. Which is there. Doesn't have to be too tight. Uh, float and needle. Make sure it's clean when it goes in. And then the pin. Which is knocking about in the tray. That's it. Blow test. Nothing. Lift the float. That's working. <clears throat> Bolt can go back on. So this goes on that way round on the machine. So I want the little tiny flooding bolt to go at the front. Um, <coughs> two bolts, which is these two, and the smaller one goes um, with the um, Phillips bit on the on the top that goes on the side, and then that one goes on on there. Ten mil screw, uh, ten mil spanner to do that up, and then we want this little tiny jet here. Just give that a quick clean through there and there's a little tiny hole just there. I've got a quick blow the air compressor. And that literally just sits in there and pushes down flush like so. That's it's got to be screwed all the way in and then four turns back out. Okay that's now been screwed all the way back in and full coming back out. Just want to do these up, make sure they're tight. I don't use the impact to do that because you do, you can strip the main jet out and do it up re relatively tight, but I want to undo it later on when it's on the machine to flood the carburetor. And that's that the carburetor now all done. We can now put it back on the machine and uh, give it a test. And it still continues to rain. This rain's going to be in for days. Right, so we have this, this gasket here, which goes on the carburetor. And then we have this connection here, which goes on to the carburetor. Put the gasket on first. And now the carburetor can go on. Nice and gently. And strip them old threads out and then once that's in place you can then put your first rod on and then followed by your spring which goes on that little tiny hole just there if you're not sure before you take these apart take photographs so it went like that and then you've got this metal oh this metal washer just give that a bit of a clean off it's a bit grubby And I just want to literally run some spray through that. That's it. And that went on that way. Like so. Lovely. Fuel can go on now. Followed by the little tiny clip, which doesn't do a great deal, but now I bring in my 10 mil um, spanner and I want to loosen up this nut on the front just to bring some fuel down unclamp that and this little tiny nut till some fuel comes out there 
There it goes. So now another carburetor is now full. Do that back up. Another cloth or rag. Clean the petrol up. Go on test for leaks. Uh, that's that done. You can get the air box in, which is in good condition. Air breather pipe goes on, and then that sits on the carb, like so. Two 10 mils. That's that. Air filter on. Hope we get us going for this old boy. He's a, he's a nice old gent. But like many over here in the UK, struggling on pensions and incomes and what have you, doesn't have a lot of money. So. Oh, I nearly nearly forgot. I was convinced the blade was on back to front on this machine. Let me tip this mower up. So yeah, you can see someone's actually sharpened this blade. They put a really good edge on it. Really good edge. But this blade's actually upside down because it should feather up the other way. So H2 is off. All right, let's try and take this off. A bit of cunt. Yep. Need to get myself a lawnmower stand. A bit like an axle stand. So let me just take this up this off and you'll best see what I'm talking about. Now this has hit something before because the pins are not on here. But it has got a location location lug there. So that's the way it was on. And that'd be digging into the ground. It wants to be on that way. So that as a grass as it strikes a grass, the grass then gets flicked up and taken up into the chute. So the blade was actually on the wrong way around, and you can tell he's actually ground, or the, whoever did it, it wasn't this fella, they have actually ground the wrong part. You can also tell because that, that ring there, is that what sits on there, and it wasn't, yeah. Right. It happens, people do do it. So let's make sure the blade's on perpendicular. Do that up. Quick slurp of my old coffee. And let's, uh, let's put this back down. That's all on now. The blade's actually really good. I don't know why I took it off to sharpen it, because it's actually really, really good. It doesn't look that old. But someone put it on back to front. Right, I'm happy with it now. Um, Let's take it outside, give it a fire, and see what happens. Right, you guys all stay in the nice dry. I'll go and get wet and test this lawnmower out, and uh, I'll come back to you shortly. Hopefully, it'll run as it should do. I'm looking for it to run on choke, off choke, and idle. That's the idea. Um, hopefully, we fixed it. Uh, we shall soon see. Runs absolutely sweet as a nut um, on choke, um, full power and idle, and it ticks over beautifully as well. So, another good little fix.
Okay, so another super little fix on that Mountfield SP454. As I say, I did suspect carburetor issue on it, and I've got a feeling it is again down to that main jet. If you just scrape it, just file it out ever so slightly, just to clean it right out, um, it makes so much difference with those engines. So that's cool. Uh, that's all done. I'm going to text the boats. That's all done, and here we super press. Not making cut the grass today or this weekend because it's, like it's going to be absolutely terrible all weekend, but. At least the old gent's now got a little more um, that's up and running and what have you. I'll give it a general tidy up, a general look over, make sure it's all safe because the blade was upside down, which means someone else has been in there and interfered. So I'll get a quick general safety check all over. And then I'll, I'll get on and do the lawn flight. Um, have a look at that. I think it's going to be a cable job, so I'm going to struggle to get a cable for that initially. Um, but with a new cable, that should run sweet and up. That's got a six variable speed roller on the back as well with a drive. So that, that's super cool. So I've that, that mount field done. Another note on the chainsaw, the um, high power 2500. That's now all fixed and done. Um, the brake cover fitted on this machine, and also when you take the brake off, the chain moves. Take the guard off. Be easier. The chain moves, and when you put the brake on, the chain is now locked into place. So that now all works. Um, it just wants uh, a carburetor tune because when you um, take the brake off, the chain just runs ever so slightly. Um, so it just wants uh, a tune up ever so slightly, just to bring the revs down on the lower side, but that's not an issue I can do it myself. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Mixed Mowers. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it informative. Um, if you've got any questions, you know where to stick them, positive or negative, I don't really mind. Um, don't forget to like um, and subscribe if you can, if it's your first time watching this film. Uh, I've got about 40 or 50 other films, all different sorts of stuff, bits and pieces. So tap the old subscribe and whack the old bell. That'd be fantastic. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again on the next episode. But until then, don't forget, 